name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. These are two wonderful nuns. Would you give them a welcoming love of applause? Thank, thanks for being here, sisters. We need holy, faithful nuns. Amen? And sister, just loan to you and I a relic. We're going to use a fourth relic tonight. It's a surprise from the Holy Spirit. This is a first-class relic of Mother Teresa. And you know, beloved, you can actually feel it. When sister held it in the hand in front of me, in the back, I felt the Holy Spirit come over me. Is that amazing? So now we're going to have four relics. You must be special to God. Four special relics. I wonder if one of the men can help me carry this table down to the front here. Can I have a big, strong man help me here? This is actually the robe that Padre used to wear in Italy, one of the robes that he wore. And I can tell you quite simply, whenever I open this, I get almost overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit, like I'm going to fall over, like I'm intoxicated as soon as I open it. When I opened it for my cousins in Philadelphia two months ago, I, I preach in different cities every week. So I was in Philadelphia a few months ago to visit my, I visited my family while I was there, and I, we have it opened in the kitchen. And the scent of roses came into the kitchen. And just now, one of our ministers of Holy Communion, just now, after Mass, came up to me, just now, and said, Father, during the consecration, I smelt the scent of roses. Right here in your a few minutes ago. Amen? Amen? So that's a sign that God is with us. And he wants me to tell you that he loves you. Now, he told me to share with you Beloved, before we start, you remember I talked about the young man at Queen of Peace Shrine there in Santa Clara? And he had a huge problem. He was almost possessed, but not yet. He was on the edge of becoming possessed. I actually believe if he had not run into me, that was an accident? No way, Jose. No. If he had not run into me, I believe tonight, that boy would have been possessed within one week. I mean, completely possessed by the devil. Well, as I sat next to him, and I didn't speak to your bishop, so I can't do the exorcism until I have permission from the bishop. You see what I mean? That would be disobedient. I won't do that. So I had to work with him, and I gave him the card that you have, the red card. We said it together, and he said to me, Father, I feel peace for the first time. But here's what I need to share with you. God said to share this with you right now. I could not do an exorcism. He didn't really need that. He needed a deliverance. I said, Lord, what can I do? I'm still obedient to the bishop to help this boy. And God said to me, he said to me, he has a wound from his father. And I turned to the boy, I said, tell me about your father. He started to tremble. He said, my father died. I said, tell me more about your father, tell me his name. And he told me his name. And I saw my father's soul in purgatory as he spoke to me. I said, tell me more about your dad. He said, my dad was, was harsh and cruel. And I said to the boy, this is the problem. I've noticed this all over the world. When I work with teenagers and young people who have demons and possess, every single one has a wound with their father, every single one. 
Their father has rejected them. They don't know what to do. They're lost. And somebody comes around who belongs to a satanic cult and introduces them to Lucifer, the father of lies. But we all want a father. We need a father. Father. And so because they don't have one, they turn to the devil like a father. And I said, you know what, my son? That's the problem. You need a father. And he started crying. He says, you need a father. That's the problem. We can take care of that right now, I told him. I said, from now on, I'm going to be your priest father. And from now on, you're going to pray to God the Father in heaven. And from now on, you're going to pray to St. Joseph to come down and be a spiritual father. And from now on, you're going to pray for your daddy in purgatory and be reunited with your daddy. Do you know, beloved, the boy began to shine with joy? Five minutes before, he was growling like an animal. His eyes turned like a cat's eyes. Five minutes later, as we prayed that prayer that you have, and we healed the father wound, the boy began to shine. I said, listen, you're joyful now. Pray for joy. He said, Father, I never heard that before. Yes, pray for joy every day. Amen? And so, beloved, as you pray for your healing tonight, I need to reveal to you that I see all over this country and all over the world the father wound everywhere I go. We're like orphans without a dad. Beloved, we need a father. Amen? And you know, some of the, the, like the women's live movement and all of that, it's not all bad. But to tell women, you don't need a husband. You can raise your children without a husband. Your children don't need a daddy. Beloved, that's destructive. Amen? We need a mother and a father. Amen? And we have a father in heaven. He's so beautiful. If you were to see God the Father right now, you would die of joy. You couldn't bear it. Do you realize that when you die, and you're faithful to Jesus, when you die, you have to receive a special grace from God to live? There's a name for that grace. You must know this name. It's in your catechism. Catechism. What is the name of the grace that God will give you when you die, if you're faithful, so you can enter heaven and see God and not die? What's that called? The beatific vision, right on. You pray that, haven't you? That's in your catechism. It's called the beatific vision. You have to receive a grace from God because he's so beautiful, you will die of joy. Brothers and sisters, to know that God loves you, and I don't care who's been telling you things that are contrary to that, whether it's your governor or the so-called president of this country or the CNN. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God. Amen? Would you say this now? Say, I am loved by God. Say this, God, fill me with your love. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let me know you personally. Be my best friend. Heal me, body and soul. Protect me forever. Now the Lord tells me to tell you this. He wants you to go to heaven. He wants you to go to heaven. Amen? Because he's saying to me to say this to you, because many Catholics think that God wants you to go to hell, that like, God's against you. Like, if I make one mistake, God's going to take his bat and knock my head off. That's not God. That's the devil. God wants you to go to heaven. Amen? He didn't make you for nothing. He made you for heaven. Amen? Jesus did not die for nothing. He died so you could enter heaven. Amen? And this is the greatest gift of all. 
that at the end of your life to fly up into heaven and see God face to face. Amen? Alleluia! I'll tell you one miracle that happened here yesterday. You know, one of your parishioners died, Brother Craig. Craig Adamy. And I don't know if you know this, he's a very humble man in your parish. You probably don't know this, he's world famous. If you ever read The Countdown to the Kingdom, one of the most popular websites in the entire internet, with millions and millions of hits, those who write that website, Christine Watkins and Mark Mallett, they quoted Craig from your parish. He's called the California Soul. Did you ever see that, the California Soul? He was so humble from your parish, you didn't even know that one of your fellow parishioners all over the world. And Brother Craig was a humble man. He had a rough life even with drugs, and God saved him from the drugs and alcohol and violence, and he became a holy man, somebody from your parish. I came back to do his funeral yesterday. I was preaching in another state, and I was praying in the chapel in Father's Rectory yesterday morning before the funeral mass to get ready. As I looked at the picture of the Virgin Mary, I suddenly saw your friend, your fellow parishioner, Craig. He was in front of me, just his face, and he was a teenager. I don't know how old Craig was when he died, what, maybe 60? Very sick, right? He was young, like 16 or 17. He was smiling at me. He was a teenager in the chapel. The face was joyful like I've never seen before. Joy. And Craig wants me to tell you this. God has this plan for you too. He wants everyone here to go to heaven and to have joy forever. Amen? Do not listen to the news or to Satan. I love you. God loves you. Die and he wants you to go to heaven and have joy forever. Amen? Beloved, when my sister Catherine, she saw my dad after he died, I had a wonderful father. After my dad died, my sister Catherine, I have five sisters. Catherine, who never has dreams, the only one of my family who never has any dreams, she had the dream of all dreams two months after my dad died for the first time in her life. And my sister saw my daddy two months after he died. And he was, again, young. When my dad died, he was almost 80, with white hair and a silver beard. He looked like Socrates. My dad was like, he was, my dad was a judge. After that, when sis, my sister Catherine saw my dad, he was young and handsome. That's no surprise, is it? He's young and handsome with dark hair. And he was talking to my sister, she said, in a beautiful garden. And Catherine was trying to tell us the story. She started crying every time. Daddy, our dad, was talking to my sister Catherine in some heavenly garden with flowers she's never seen before. And he called my sister Cap, not Catherine. We always called her Cap. And he called her Cap. When they got all done talking, he said to Catherine, I'll never forget this. Now, Catherine's in heaven now, too. This was many years ago. He said to my sister, Cap, I got to go now. I'm busy. I'll see you later. I'm busy. And he took off. What is my dad doing in heaven? They're busy. You see what I'm trying to get at? That we think heaven is boring. Like we're all wearing like white robes like this. And we're like statues like this. Stop it. That's not heaven. That's hell. In heaven, you're wearing clothes, colors you've never seen before. In heaven, beloved, you have things to do there. If you're an artist, you're going to be painting with the artist paintings a thousand times more beautiful than any painting on this earth. Amen. And if you're a cook, call me. I'm going to come to your tent if you're a cook. Because you're going to cook the best food in the world. Amen. 
Heaven is something beautiful and exciting. And then, of all things, after my father died many years later, I saw my dad. At the end of Mass, some 11 years later, I never saw him before when he died. 11 years later, I was saying Mass in my mother's house, the family house. And I came home to visit my mother because she was dying. And I was praying over her. And I asked God to give me a sign. I said, God, give me a sign. Because every time I anoint my mother, she got better. 18 years straight. 18 years straight, she got better. I said, Lord, if I anoint my mother, she's going to get better? Or, Lord, you don't need to heal her for me. I said, God, my mother is beautiful and holy, and she belongs to you. You can take her home if you want to. She's better off there, you know? She was sick and suffering here, and I'm going to let go of her. I'm not going to hold her here just for me. She was in pain, you know what I mean? I said, Lord... You could take her home. She'll be young again and beautiful. Should I call my brothers and my sisters? I had five sisters and two brothers. Should I call them to come? Because if she's dying, I want her to be here this week to be with mom for that last moment. But if not, Lord, heal her. Let me know what you want to do. I don't know. And so my sister came home right then to take care of my mom for the day. And I went to the other room to say Mass. And my little sister, Catherine, said to me, Jimmy, I have to go to the store. I said, okay, is Mama sleeping? Yes. We'll keep the door open, I told her. So my mom is sleeping. The door is open. I'm the only one in the house besides my mom. And I'm saying Mass in the other bedroom on the other side, but I can hear. I finish the Mass and I'm cleaning the chalice when something moves next to me in the room. And I turn. And I don't know how to explain this to you. All I can do is describe to you what I've seen. I turned, and in the air was a window floating in the air. And I saw it with these eyes, a window. And it got bigger and bigger in front of me. And what would you do if you saw a window floating in the air? You'd look through it, wouldn't you? I looked through the window, see what's going on here? So I looked through the window, and lo and behold, I saw my dad. I kid you not. And he was younger than me. He was like 30, maybe 33. He was young and handsome with black hair. And his back was turned to me, and I saw him. And my dad was going like, I'm behind here. Looking through the window, my dad's going like this. What's he doing? He's conducting. I said, well, my dad's a lawyer. No, oh, she's not a conductor. So I looked to see what he was doing, and I turned around, around my father's waist, and I saw three of my grandparents sitting in the first row. I haven't seen them back in 25 years. Three of my grandparents. And I saw other relatives uncles and aunts and great uncles, about 75 of them, about almost the size of this group right here. And my dad was going like this and they were singing. And I'm watching all of this and suddenly my dad turns around and looks at me and smiles. He must have felt my eyes piercing his back. He smiled the most beautiful smile beloved I'd ever seen. No worry. No tension, no pain, no sickness. He was a perfect smile. Peaceful and joyful. And he looked at me, I couldn't believe it. And he said to me, hey, Jim, like that. I'll never forget it. He said my name. He said, hey, Jim. And I looked at hey. I looked at that, I couldn't believe it. And he said to me, Jim, we're getting ready for mom. How can I forget these words? We're getting ready for mom, he said to me. And when he said that, remember what I asked God a few minutes before? To give me a sign? Is mama going to heaven? Are you going to heal her again? He said, we're getting ready for mom. And he turned back around like this. And he went like that. I watched again. They were rehearsing the welcome song for my mother. 
I'm getting goosebumps right now. They were rehearsing the welcome song to welcome my mother into heaven. Amen? When you take your last breath, your family will be waiting for you. They're already rehearsing now. And when you die, if you're faithful to Jesus, he wants you to go to heaven. They're going to welcome you and clap for you and say, Welcome, Maria! Welcome! They're going to sing for you. You're going to enter into the ecstasy of holy joy forever. Amen? And it won't be boring. I have news for you. This life is boring, not heaven. Amen? Hell is boring, not heaven. Amen? And so when you touch the holy relics tonight, beloved, pray for that ultimate healing. And I'm serious. I want you to ask God to bring you to heaven one day. That's the greatest healing, is it not? The ultimate healing. Pray, yes, for cancer, for anything else, for thyroids, for skin conditions, for heart problems. All those things, ask for them. Would you like me to put some oil on your forehead? I'd be glad to do that. So you'll come by and touch the relics, pray for your healing, and then pray for heaven. You don't want to miss that. Amen? Amen? And that's what God wants too. He wants you to go there. Any questions? We have one more prayer to give you before we start the healing. I think Tony and Carmen have the prayer for release from ancestral curses. Anybody have the little handout on that? Are they back there, Tony and Carmen? Or are they here in the church? Should be a little paper for the release from ancestral curses. It's a prayer to pray for each of your families that anything in your family is mama. Yes. Yes, when you come up to receive your blessing, you can stand in proxy for someone else. You sure can. There's a prayer for release from ancestral curses, and the prayer is meant to free you and your family from anything in your family that's nasty. Like, for instance, in my family, it was alcoholism, it was killing my family. It could be drug abuse as well. It could be something like anger in the family or pride or greed. Maybe a spirit of sickness in the family. Everybody gets cancer. You see what I mean? We're going to pray for the release from those curses as well so that you and your whole family are free. We're going to begin, though, by praying your red prayer card. So I'm going to say the first half, if you would answer for the second half. I'm going to say, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Let's say it ten times right now. First of all, for your healing, whatever you need, that the blood of Jesus will heal you tonight through these relics and through the blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to say the first half, friends, if you'd answer for your healing personally. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Can you feel that, beloved? Something just changed in the church just now when we said that ten times. It's like a darkness is lifted off of the church. A darkness is just lifted. Let's say it ten more times. For anyone here that you're struggling with depression, like sorrow and sadness and depression and despair, just pray that God will lift the spirit of depression from you so you can have joy. Amen? Amen. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 
most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Now let's pray at least one more set. The Lord tells me we have a problem with anger tonight. That some of us in our families, there's a spirit of anger in the family where we like to say mean things to one another and raise our voices at one another. We want to get rid of that spirit. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you, beloved, you say the first half of the prayer, and I'm going to answer you 10 times in a row to get rid of any anger in our hearts tonight. Are you ready? You say this now. Most. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us and 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 the whole world. Teach us how to count. <laughs> Amen. Now, one more. This is really very emotional to me. I, I can feel the souls when I'm preaching to a place that we have quite a few today that you are afraid of God in an unhealthy way. You think that God wants to, wants to condemn you. You feel condemned. Like God, he's not on your side, you see? Like you got to prove to God how good you are. This is a lie from hell. We want to pray 10 more that you will know how beautiful God is. Amen? He doesn't want you to go to hell. He's on your side. He's got your back. No matter what you've done, he can forgive you. Amen? So 10 more, you're going to leave these 10, that you can finally believe that God loves you. And you can feel it. Amen? So 10 times in a row, you can know God's love all together, most. Save us and the whole world. 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 Amen. Alleluia. Do you love God? Do you want to love him more? Then say this now. Say, Jesus, I love you, but I want to love you more. Give me perfect love for you. I want to live with you in heaven. I want to live in eternal joy. I want to go to heaven forever. I am all yours, Lord Jesus. And all that I have is yours through the heart of Mary. Amen. Amen. Father, I know that you love me, and I ask you to bring all of my friends here to heaven. Bring all of them to heaven one day, Jesus. I know you died for them. I know you did. And Lord, you know that I suffer as your priest. I offer your su my sufferings in your blood and Mary's tears that everyone here will go to heaven 
I ask you for this favor tonight. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Now, friends, um, I'll have Tony and Carmen. We were we needed the prayer. You have that one for ancestral curses. You would pass that out real quick. Maybe five or six of us can help our these good people. We'll do this one last. It's only one paragraph. This one last prayer. We're going to start the healing of the relics. This is the prayer to free your family from anything evil that's attacking your family: alcohol, drug abuse, adultery. Pornography, homosexuality, horrible anger, atheism, the spirit of atheism, the spirit of doubting. This would free your family from anything dark that's reigning in your family. The spirit of unforgiveness in the family. This prayer was given by the Lord Jesus Christ to a young visionary in Africa. It's been approved by the Holy Catholic Church. It has what's called an imprimatur. It's completely approved. It's a safe prayer. We're going to say it together just once. And our Lord asks us to pray it every day for 144 days in a row. He would break every curse over your family. He wants you to get as many as possible to pray it in your family. So do your best to find your brothers and sisters and your uncles and your aunts, your children and grandchildren, your cousins, as many as possible to pray it with you. Then it's much more effective. It works fast when the whole family prays. Feel free to take a picture of it on your phone later tonight. Take a picture and send it to all of your contacts, that prayer. It's free. Send it to all of them. And raise your holy hand if you did not get a prayer. There's somebody in the back passing them out. Thank you. You can read it quietly while we're getting the last few people their copy. I'm going to say it with you. And Carmen, I need one up here so I can lead everyone in the prayer. Oh, thank you, Mama. Make sure everybody has one. Thank you. Si, gracias. Prayer for release from ancestral curses. I'm going to read it, beloved, and if you would just listen the first time, just listen to it and ask me any questions you have, then we're going to say it together. This is an official prayer approved by the church. Eternal Father, you are the only immortal God, God who is love, merciful, and kind. Look at your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy. I offer you the pains of his scourging at the pillar his wounds and blood for all your people who are living under the weight of the curse due to the sins of their ancestors and their disobedience for breaking the covenant they made with you. May you set us free through the scourging of your son. Heal us through his wounds and save us through his precious blood. Amen. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, Release us from curses. Holy wounds of Jesus Christ, heal our wounds. By your scourging. Amen. Now we're going to say together one example. When I arrived in Georgia, where I'm stationed now, seven years ago, Dr. David came up to me. He is a member of my, my community and my team. Dr. David said to me, Father, my family, all my brothers and sisters have all become atheists. They all have doctorate degrees. You know how that goes? You go to college, you lose your faith. They all, like four of them, have doctorate degrees. They all lost their faith except for David. He was a faithful Catholic, married with nine children. He's a great man of God. He's still my number one helper. He said, Father, the others, they've lost their faith. They have their doctorates, but no, they don't go to church at all. They don't believe in God. As David spoke to me, the Holy Spirit moved inside of me. I said, David, wait right here, I told him, wait here. And I went to my office, I pulled out the prayer you have right now, and I gave it to David. 
I said, David, I want you to say this with your family every day for 144 days. You have, listen to this, a demon of atheism in your family. It's not just college, that's part of it. There's a curse of atheism in your family, a curse. I could feel it and I'm feeling it right now. It was a, a demon of atheism. There are demons of drugs. There are demons of alcohol. There are demons of pornography. There are demons of sex perversion. There are demons of adultery. There's all kinds of naughty demons. There's a demon of atheism. I said, David, you have a curse over your family. Say this prayer every day. So David was faithful. They said it 144 days in a row. That was early in the year, some seven years ago. Later that year, this is a true story. Later that year, all of his siblings came back to the Catholic Church on their own. The same year. They all came back to the Catholic faith. His sister started a prayer meeting at the local Catholic Church. The atheist sister. You see what God did? He broke the curse over the family and they all were healed instantaneously. Amen? And by the way, if you belong to a religious community, which I do and the sisters do, if you pray this for your community, God will break spells and curses over the community as well. Isn't that interesting? Alcoholism, drug abuse, all three can all leave the family. Are you ready? Be faithful to this prayer. Beloved, it's worth a million bucks, this prayer. Approved by the church. We're going to say it now. Try to continue it for 144 more days. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Friends, let's say this now together. Eternal Father, you are the only immortal God. God who is love, merciful, and kind. Look at your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy. I offer you the pains of his scourging at the pillar, his wounds and blood for all your people who are living under the weight of the curse due to the sins of their ancestors and their disobedience for breaking the covenant they made with you. May you set us free through the scourging of your son. Heal us through his wounds and save us through his precious blood. Amen. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, release us from curses. Holy wounds of Jesus Christ, heal our wounds. By your scourging, seal us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.